Hi everyone and welcome to the tutorial. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how you can use crochet seams in your knitting and specifically how you can use them to join together some knitted blocks. So here I've knitted four small blocks and I want to join them together to make a larger square. So I'm going to use crochet to join all of these gaps together, seam it together and to have a really neat final effect. So you may have done something similar before if you're a crocheter and use this technique to join together say granny squares or other sort of motifs that you've made, but you can also use it for your knitting. So for this technique you're going to need whatever you're wanting to seam together. You're going to need your yarn, you're going to need scissors to be able to cut your yarn and you're going to need a crochet hook. Now for the yarn I'm using the same weight of yarn as what I used for this knitting. So this was DK weight or 8 ply yarn and so I'm using the same for my seaming. I like to generally always use the same weight of yarn. I'm going to use a contrasting colour so you can see clearly what I'm doing. But ideally for your project you would use a matching yarn so that you hide your crochet seams as much as possible. For the crochet hook, I'm using a size larger than the knitting needle size I used for these blocks. And that's because my crochet tension is tighter than my knitted tension. So I need to use a larger hook size to compensate and to try to match the two as much as possible. You can adjust your hook size according to what your individual tension is like. You might find that you're a very loose crocheter and you can actually use the same hook size as your needle size. Or conversely, you might find that you're a very tight crocheter and you actually have to go up a few more hook sizes to be able to match your two tensions together. You can simply start working your seams and then pause and assess what's happening to the knitted fabric. If you're finding that it's starting to flare a bit, it sounds like your hook size is probably too big and you actually need to go down a size. And if the fabric is really puckering, that sounds like your hook size is too small and you need to go up a size. Let's get started. All right, I'm gonna start with these two blocks on the right. It doesn't really matter where you start, as long as the way that you're joining all the blocks together is consistent. So what I'm gonna do is join together all of these horizontal seams, and then I'm going to join the long vertical seams. So what that means is I've got these two blocks, I'll join them together and then stop and cut my yarn, and then I have a larger block of two joined squares, and then I will join these two squares together, so I'll have another large block of two squares, and then I will join this seam here, which is my vertical seam. So rather than having to do four individual seams, doing this one, this one, this one, and then stopping and doing this one, you can do this as one long seam, and that just makes everything a lot quicker and easier. If I was joining together a larger project, so let's say I have three squares by three squares, so I've got another one here, another one here, and then there's three more down the bottom, I just do exactly the same thing. I join my horizontal seam, so that one's done. I join this one. I'd have another two blocks here, I join them there, and then I would have three more blocks down the bottom here, I join each of these horizontal seams, and then I will have three strips of three squares and I join all of the vertical seams together. So you just keep joining sort of your short seams, which in this case I'm calling my horizontal seams, so you join all the square ones together to make large strips, and then you just join all those strips together. So the first thing I'm going to do with these two blocks is I'm going to flip this one over so that now the right sides of the blocks are facing. I'm going to do my crochet seam on the wrong side of my work and it's going to be done along this edge just here and you might see how neat this edge is. I've actually done a slip stitch edging so I slipped the last stitch knit wise on every right side row and then purled it and then when I got to the end of my wrong side row I slipped that stitch purl wise and on the right side row I knitted it and it's created this really neat sort of edging that actually looks like the top of crochet stitches and that's going to make it really easy to now insert our crochet hook into them and work the crochet seam. If you haven't done that you can still just simply seam together whatever the edge is that you've ended up with but I would recommend turning your edge into a slip stitch edge so that it just makes everything so much easier for you. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my crochet hook and I'm going to insert it into this edge stitch here. 
So if this wasn't a slip stitch edge, I would sort of just insert the hook through the edge, you know, from the outside into the inside. Because I've got the slip stitch edge, what I'm going to do is pick up one half of the slip stitch. So each slip stitch looks a little bit like a small V. And so the outside edge of the V is what I'm going to pick up. So I'm going to start off right in the corner here. And this first stitch is a little bit tight, so it is a bit tricky. But once you pop the hook through, you don't have to worry about it anymore. And there we go. So I've inserted the hook through just the outside strand of that slip stitch. And then I'm also going to insert into the outside strand on the slip stitch in this corner of the second block. Like so. And now I've picked up both edge stitches. I'm now ready to grab my yarn. And I'm going to wrap it around my crochet hook. Just like so. And then I'm going to draw the yarn through both of these edge stitches. So we pull it through that one and then we pull it through that one. So now we've actually joined these two blocks together and our yarn for the crochet seam has been attached. We're now going to insert the crochet hook into the next edge stitch. So it's this one here and once again because I have my lovely slip stitch edging I'm just going to insert through the outside of that stitch and then we insert into the outside of the stitch on the next block. Now making sure I'm not wrapping the tail end, that I'm wrapping the end of yarn that's actually coming from my ball. I'm going to wrap that around the crochet hook again. And then once again, draw that yarn through both of the edge stitches. So through that block, then through that block. And now I have two loops of yarn around my crochet hook. And I'm going to draw this loop that's closest to the tip of the hook through this loop, which is further away. So you just use the actual hook part of the crochet hook to help you, like so. And this is a slip stitch. Once we've added more, it'll start to look a bit like a chain, but this is what the first one looks like. And it's secured the yarn and our two blocks together. Once again, we repeat, we go through the next edge stitch on this block, like so. The next edge stitch on this block, Wrap the yarn around the crochet hook, draw it through both edge stitches, and then draw this loop through this loop, like so. You see the chain starting to form? Once again, insert the crochet hook through this stitch, insert through this stitch, wrap the working yarn around, draw it through both slip stitches, and then draw that loop through that loop. So hopefully you can start to see what's happening. We're gradually joining these two blocks together while creating a really sort of narrow crochet. This is like the smallest sort of crochet stitch that you can do, a slip stitch. So it's not causing too much bulk to occur in the seam, but it's joining those two blocks together. If we speed it up a little bit, you're just going to keep going through both blocks making sure for my slip stitch edging I'm just going through the outside picking up that outside strand of each slip stitch and then there's our seam starting to occur so if I now just show you what this is looking like on the right side look how neat that join is coming together so because I'm just going through the outside strands, I'm getting this little decorative sort of edging showing on the right side of my work. This is the other half of each of the slip stitches. This sort of, I'm not quite sure what you'd call it. This is this really defined edge that's happening along here. So if I had gone through both loops, that would not be a feature. It would be that the garter stitch is sort of just touching each other without this little line in between. And so if you haven't done your slip stitch edging, that'll just be sort of what yours looks like. But you can also see if I pull it apart, you can just sort of see the white yarn here. But if I don't pull it apart, you can't see it. And once again, if I had used a matching yarn to these yarns, that would be even harder to see when I pull it apart. So going back to the wrong side again, I'm just going to keep crocheting 
these two blocks together in the same fashion that I have been and once I've gotten to the end here I'm going to pause and we'll see what to do next all right I've gotten to the end so I finished joining these two squares together and you can see this is a really solid sort of join it's actually a little bit tight and on the next two squares I'm going to manually adjust my tension to loosen that up a little bit but the fabric's sitting fairly flat so I'm relatively happy with how that's turned out and if I flip over to my right side you can see how lovely and neat that join is so now that those two squares are joined I'm going to cut my yarn so I've still got a loop of yarn around my crochet hook. I'm going to remove the hook and that's my loop there. I'm going to make the loop big so that I can pull the end that's attached to the ball through. And then I'm just going to pull this tight and that's going to secure it like so. Then I can cut this, grab my scissors, cut it leaving a little bit of a tail that I can weave in later. And that's done. Okay, so now we're going to join the next two blocks. I'm just making sure that my patterning is lining up how I wanted it still. And we're just going to do the exact same thing to join these two blocks as we did with the first two. So I'm going to flip them so that the right sides are facing together. And then this is the edge that I'm going to join. I'm going to take my crochet hook and insert it into the first stitch that's right on that right side corner and then into the second edge stitch. Grab my yarn, wrap it around the crochet hook, draw it through both edge stitches, then insert it into the next two edge stitches, one on either side, wrap the yarn around, draw it through the edge stitches and then draw that first loop through the second and we've joined them and we just repeat that until those two squares are joined together and then we'll see how to join our vertical seams. Okay I've gotten all the way to the other corner so I finished joining these two blocks as well. Once again I'm just going to cut the yarn so draw a loop so I can pull my yarn through. You can also cut your yarn first and then pull it through. I'll do that and cut leaving a tail long enough that I can weave in later. And there is our beautiful seam. So now comes the fun part where I get to join these longer strips together. I'm just going to first make sure that my patterning is sitting how I want it. So that's the order I wanted the colours to be in. And then you guessed it, exact same thing as before. You're going to fold one strip over the other so that the right sides of the strips are facing. And then I'm going to join this entire two long edges together. So just as before. Grab your crochet hook and your yarn. Insert your hook into the first edge stitch on the right hand corner. Then into the first edge stitch on the corner of the other strip. Grab your yarn. Wrap it around the crochet hook. You guys know all this by now. Just go through both edge stitches. And it's the exact same technique that we were using. We're just going to join longer edges this time because these are our vertical seams. Alright, so I've just finished with seaming together these two blocks. And now I'm going to jump over to doing these two blocks. But there's a little area here where my horizontal seams have met my vertical seam and I'm just going to make sure that I pick up the edge stitch where the horizontal seam went into as well just so we make sure that we close up any possible hole that could appear in that area. So I do a slip stitch there and then I'm going to pick up see that there's just a little hole here where my horizontal seam ends so I'm going to pick up into that edge stitch 
again and same with this block here there's a little hole there so I'll insert my crochet hook into that and then I'm just sort of joining those little gaps together and making sure that this point where all four blocks meet is as neat as possible. So we'll just do one more crochet stitch and then let's see how that looks. That looks really nice and neat on the right side. So you can sort of do that bit however you want but just make sure that you actually are going over the top of your horizontal seams and that'll just close up the gap. So I'm just going to finish off this seam, go all the way to the end there and exact same thing as before, you're going to cut your tail and draw it through the loop that was on your crochet hook to secure it and then our blocks will be completely seamed together. So that's how to do a crochet seam with knitting. Thank you so much for watching the tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please do leave them below.